everybody, this is day nine of Commit, 30 days of yoga. Today's practice is an energizing flow that is going to fire up the body. We're gonna be moving a little more quickly than usual, so make sure that you remain focused, move with control, and take your time in transitions. Feel free to pause the video anytime you feel like you need to catch up or even take a short rest. And stick around to the end of the video where we talk about some tips for your practice. Let's begin kneeling in Thunderbolt Pose, sitting on our heels at the back of our mat. Starting with some neck stretches, we're doing half circles down from shoulder to shoulder. Place your right hand down at your side, stretching the left arm up and over. And over to the other side, side bend. To table. Take the time to line yourself up. Begin moving through cat-cow, flowing with your breath. Moving to Downward Facing Dog, walk out the heels to warm up the legs. Hop or walk to a forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale down. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, hands to heart. Let's move through our little warm-up flow three times. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, hands to heart. Two more times. Upward salute forward fold. Half lift and fold. Upward salute. Hands to heart. One more time. Inhale up. Exhale down. Half lift. Down, upward salute, hands to heart. Keeping your hands together at your heart, raise your right knee to hip level. We're going to move from Warrior Three back to this single leg mountain pose three times. Send the right leg back and arms forward, hinging to Warrior Three, and return to single leg mountain pose. 
more times. To warrior three, don't forget to breathe here. And single leg mountain. One more time, warrior three. Single leg mountain. Step back to warrior one, arms up, bend that front knee. Open up to warrior two. We're going to move from extended side angle to reverse warrior three times. To extended side angle, reverse warrior. Two more times, side angle, reverse warrior. Last one, extended side angle, and reverse. Back to warrior two. Straighten that front leg to triangle pose. Legs remain as they are, hands down and fold to pyramid pose. Rotate the back foot forward, bend the front knee, coming up to crescent lunge. Let's lower and lift that lunge with arm circles back on each pulse six times. Five more. Four. Three more. Two. And one. Float that back foot forward to eagle pose, right leg over left, left arm over right, shoulder blades wide. And release to mountain pose, hands to heart, taking a few deep breaths. The other side, raise the left knee to single leg mountain. We've got that warrior three flow from here three times. To warrior three, single leg mountain. Two more times, warrior three, single leg mountain. Last flow, warrior three. single leg mountain. To warrior one. Open up to warrior two. We're flowing from extended side angle to reverse warrior three times. Extended side angle. Reverse warrior. Two more times to side angle. Reverse warrior. Last one, extended side angle. And reverse.
to Warrior Two. Straighten the front leg, moving to Triangle Pose. To Pyramid Pose. Turn the back toes forward, bend the front knee, coming up to Crescent Lunge, arms up. Let's lower and lift that lunge with an arm circle back on each pulse six times. Five. Four more. Three. Two. Last one. Float the back leg up to eagle pose, left leg over right, right arm over left. And release to mountain pose, hands to heart, adjusting as needed. Inhale to Upward Salute. Exhale to Chair Pose, hands to heart. Exhale, Forward Fold. Step or hop the feet back to a Plank Pose. Downward Facing Dog. We're going to move from Down Dog to Plank three times, moving with control. To Plank. Down Dog. Two more times. Plank. Down Dog. Last one. Plank. Down dog. Coming down again, this time dipping the belly to upward facing dog. And back to down dog. Two more times. Upward facing dog. Down dog. Last one to up dog. Down dog. Raise the right leg to three legged dog. We're going to pull the right knee down center as close to the elbows as we can three times. Two more. Last one. Lower the leg to down dog and walk it out. Raise the left leg. Three knee pulls down center. Two. Last one. Lower the leg to down dog and walk it out. Come forward, down onto your belly and press up to cobra pose. Keep the elbows bent if you need to. Press back to child's pose, arms shoulder width apart, forearms down. 
the cobra rolls now. Dive forward, nose as close to the mat as possible for as long as possible, returning to cobra pose. Let's do that five more times. Back to child's pose. Begin to roll forward as smoothly as possible. Get strong through the shoulders just before the chest lift in cobra. Four more times. To cobra. Back to child's pose. Three more, sliding forward, stay strong. And press back, remember to breathe. Two more to cobra. And back. Last one to cobra. And back to child's pose. Take a few deep breaths here. Coming up to table, cross the ankles and sit back. Recline onto your back, knees bent. Feet hip width apart, arms at your sides. Let's raise the hips and arms at the same time. Hips to bridge pose, arms up overhead and lower it all together. Six more times, let's move with our breath. Inhale, lift, bridge, arms overhead. Exhale, lower it all down. On your own now for five more. Last one. Draw the knees in and rock a little from side to side. Keep the right knee in and extend the left leg out long, pointing through the toes. Bring your hands together in Kali Mudra, steeple hands or Charlie's Angels hands, lift the shoulders, engaging the core, and twist, pointing the index fingers to the outside of the right leg. Switch the legs and point to the opposite direction. Two more times on each side. Let's switch. And switch. One more time each side, switch. And switch. Lower down, hug the knees and begin to rock the body forward and back. Next, we're going to roll to seated without touching the feet down if you can. When you roll back, avoid touching the head down. Move at your own pace here, rounding out the back on the roll. Engage the core to control the movement. you can use your hands or hands free we're going to roll to standing making our way to mountain pose hands to heart finding our breath let's 
talk about moving with your breath and what that means. So moving with your breath is a cue or an instruction that you might be given if you're guided into a pose or a dynamic movement and then expected to continue it over. And so using cat-cow as an example, we'll go into table and we're often told exhale as you round out the back. Inhale, dip belly. Continue flowing with your breath. So then that means, if we assume, exhale, round out, inhale, dip. Exhale, round out, inhale, dip. Now, that makes sense in terms of movement. If we're compressing the upper body here, compressing the lungs, then we're going to be exhaling. And then when we're opening up the body, opening up the chest, then we're going to be inhaling. So that's pretty much standard throughout pretty much every yoga pose or every movement in yoga. If you're folding, pressing, you're exhaling. When you open up, you're inhaling. But then it might not make sense if you're folding and holding, then what do you do? You need to keep breathing. The important thing is that as you're transitioning into that pose or into that position, that you're doing it on the exhale or on the inhale. So applying that to cat-cow, let's say your breaths are a little bit shallow and that you're breathing really quickly. And so if we're moving with our breath, that means we have to move really quickly, but we don't want to move really quickly because then we're losing control of the movement and it doesn't feel as good. You don't feel like you're getting the benefit of it. So in this case, what you would do is exhale, round out the back. Take a full breath, inhale, exhale. Then on the inhale, dip the belly. So we're opening up on the inhale. We're flowing with our breath in a way that makes sense with our body. And then again, if my breathing is shallow, if I wanna hold here for a little bit longer, I'm free to do so. I'm listening to my body and what it wants to do. But on the exhale is when I'm gonna transition and round out and compress. Good. And now the same thing would apply to a twist. It makes sense that in a twist, we're exhaling because we're squeezing, we're compressing. We're wringing out that lung. We're closing one up and we're exhaling here. As we come out, we inhale to open up and to fill those lungs with air. Okay. So if we're holding a twist, what we can do is two things. First thing we can do is on each exhale, as we're holding, we can focus on getting a little bit deeper into that twist. And on the inhales, we can focus on our alignment. So I'm gonna exhale and twist deep. Good. Inhale, I'm gonna get up a little bit taller here because I feel like I'm slouching. Okay. Exhale, twist a little bit deeper. And so nice and slow, these very, very subtle movements. And then inhale, oh, maybe my toes are slumping. Point those up. Exhale, twist a little deeper. The other thing we can do when we're holding a twist is visualize the lung that's open, the one that's not being squished, so the open side. And we can visualize it filling with air on each inhale. And then again, focus on really holding that twist strongly as we lengthen the spine on the exhale. So when we're moving a little bit quicker or we're moving through something a little bit difficult like we did in today's practice with the cobra rolls, we can use our breath to our advantage. The most difficult part of the movement should be your exhale. You can use your breath to your advantage. You can use it to help you feel strong. You can use it to help prepare your body. So in the case of the cobra roll, that hardest part is when we're coming through and really engaging the shoulders. So here I'm gonna inhale to prep. Exhale, push through. And inhale, come up. Exhale, sit back onto my heels. Inhale. Exhale, come through. Inhale, open up, and exhale back. And so that's a really great example of moving with your breath in a way that benefits you, that helps you, that helps you guide your body through the pose a little bit better, 
finding that mind-body connection, finding that breath connection to your body, to your movement. When you're moving through a quicker flow, you can apply the same practice that we did to the cat cow. If you're, if you're expecting yourself to be able to move with each breath, so inhale here, exhale here, inhale here, exhale here, see, you get it. Um, you might be moving so fast that your breath starts to quicken and then you're thinking, oh no, now I have to move my body faster. Well, it's not necessarily the case. If you notice that happening, work to slow down your breath. Take some deeper breaths and that'll help you anyway. In holding poses, it'll get more oxygen flowing to your muscles, to your brain, and it'll help you control the movements that much better. So really focus on slowing down your breath when you feel it speeding up. But in a faster flow, it is going to be moving a little bit quicker. If you don't want to move your body as quickly as your breath is moving, that's absolutely fine. Listen to your body. Do what it's telling you to do. The important thing to remember is when we're closing the body, we exhale. And when we open the body, we inhale. So think about your transition and really focus on making that next movement on the breath that makes sense for it. And then, and that's all. If you're not connecting your breath to your movements because it's challenging, focus more on the movements. We don't wanna injure ourselves and we don't wanna fall over because we were focusing so much on our breath that our body just stopped listening to us. So focus on the movements first and then the breath will come eventually with time and with practice.